All right. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to ask the panelists and also Dr. Cooks to come up. We have about 15 minutes for Q&A. Um, and while they're making their way here, I just want to say how astounded I am between the sort of call and response between librarians, curators, and the artists that Dr. Cooks uh, um, presented to us. And um, re reiterate that question that kind of circulated, which is how do you prepare people to really respect um, the archives and the power they, they have to sort of reclaim and represent black lives and black history. So with that, I'll turn it over to Q&A um, for the next few minutes. Thank you so much. Um, I have a question about conservation. Um, do we have a HBCU that has, uh, it, or is thinking about developing a uh, department so that we can conserve our own work? Thank you. Hi again, this is Pella McDaniels. Um, at Emory, we, we have a relationship with the AUC, Atlanta University, Stallman, and Morehouse. We also work with Auburn Avenue Research Library. And so with this kind of consortium of university colleges and special collections in Atlanta, we're helping them develop new um, processes for preservation. And so I know, for instance, with Andrea, um, we have done a number of projects together. They don't have a preservation department writ large, so we can train people. But in collaboration with different institutions, we actually hold these different uh, conferences or uh, opportunities for a group kind of project pro to process materials. So I know that they want to. And I think Clark Atlanta was the last uh, university in Atlanta to have a library study program. It's gone now. And so at some point, we're going to have to revisit how do we create an entity in Atlanta where that can actually happen when we're training um, archivists to work through preservation as, as one of the opportunities for occupations or something. Last spring, or last summer, Dr. John Tino Robinson at Tuskegee convened a conference of HBCU galleries that participated in the Conserva Legacy Show and with um, Yale and Winterthur. They're trying to include students to learn more about art conservation and how to call out for students to submit applications for this summer. We had a student in the chemistry program here at Howard to be selected for that program and we're hoping that other students will continue to follow and participate. So on the art side or the painting and object side, there is an effort to try and create opportunities for students to learn conservation because we don't have many people who like to combine that art side, we like STEAM versus STEM, but to see it in practice with art conservation. So with document conservation, I'll leave it to the archivist, but on the painting side, some work is, is, is happening. I, I just wanted to tell you that here at Howard, we do have the opportunity to preserve paintings because we are a part of the Washington Research Library Consortium that has a facility out in uh, Upper Marlboro where some of the other universities store their art for preservation. But I'm not sure if we make use of that facility from the university. I also wanted to follow up. My name is Marita Poole. I'm the director at Clark Atlanta University Art Museum. In terms of doing the arts, particularly the ones from the Atlanta Annuals, we have a relationship with the Atlanta Art Conservation Center. So, and we are working with them to send students and to find ways to encourage more relationships so that we can create people to go into that field. Thank you so much. We were granted an award to partner with Spelman Fine Arts Museum and Clark Atlanta University Gallery to enhance access to collections through, digitization, through digitization. Also, they're currently hiring for a position that will initially be grant funded but expected to continue through. The incumbent will work with the museum directors, faculties, archivists, and librarians to, to support the development of academically rigorous and pedagogical Ped, ped, pedagogically sound curriculum opportunities through the AUC. So people for looking for job opportunities, um, please find me and I'll give you her information.
Yes, sir. Yes, thank you to the panel, of course. Uh, I have more of a acquisitional comment. Earlier this week, I told President Frederick that I was a Howard alum in the visual arts. I am a bit ashamed and embarrassed that we allowed an institution like Emory, which as recently as 50 years ago had been so hostile towards its few black students then, to acquire what would be the more than 60 file cartons of the James Porter papers at a public auction, sight unseen, simply for what they knew Porter meant to the field and for relatively little cost when Howard showed little or no interest in the situation. So first we need to acknowledge the extraordinary holdings of archival materials that Emory has built up in the area of African American art and artists and which they now house in a most magnificent setting. Pelham as the Emory representative, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I knew that was coming. <laughs> Stephen, I talked beforehand, but you know, it's a great segue into having these conversations about preservation, but also about honoring the archives. And I think, you know, it was mentioned earlier, how do you, how do you train not only your students, but your faculty and your staff to honor the past, especially with these materials that we know are very, they're tremendously important. I took my kids to the mall this week to see the African American Museum, and I asked the question, you know, I have these, you know, I, I consider bright kids, and we're walking down the mall towards the museum, we see the Washington Monument, and I tell them, look around the mall, what do you see? I said, a bunch of buildings, of course, right? I said, do you see anything different about the museum we're going to compared to all the other museums? So yeah, Dad, it has like a skirt around it, right? I said, but what do you see? And I finally had to say, it's disrupting this narrative. It's not a simple thing as a building. It disrupts the continuity of what was. And so I think what has happened, because, because of Randall Burkett, because of Rudolph Byrd, Richard Long, Dr. Long, um, Emory, with this black faculty, we've, we've disrupted the narrative that Emory has put out there. We've disrupted this idea of what Emory has meant in the past with what we're doing in the present. And by having exhibitions like the Philip Satch exhibition that is coming down, mind you, in May, and I suggest you get there as soon as you can, uh, we're disrupting it in a, in a way that is both progressive, positive, and I hope inspiring. And so to Stephen's point, I, I agree that our, our historically black colleges, colleges and universities need to have these kinds of materials on the campus so the students and faculty can use them for their work. But I also think that the students in particular need to know the value of these materials, and not just old stuff you know, that smell like your grandma's house. That this material is the material that is, should be inspirational, that tells about your collective past, but also tells you about the present and ideas about moving towards the future. But are we conveying that, I think, through the archives enough? Are we providing access, as we've mentioned, to these materials in a creative way that they can actually see that, feel that, experience that? So while, you know, we have resources to collect these materials. The so one thing I'm proud of is that we're not just hoarding them. We're actually using them. We have fellowships. We have $20,000 in fellowships to give out annually for researchers to come and use the collections. Uh, we provide opportunities to present these papers or we even support publications as much as we can uh, through, um, you know, I'm building a relationship with University of Georgia Press right now to develop this new area of uh, publishing around African American art and art historians. So we're working exceptionally hard, Stephen, to make sure that it doesn't look like a smash and grab kind of scenario, when in fact, we are trying to develop the field as much as possible. Please wrap it up, okay? okay. Um, I have a quick question. So I'm an artist, an art educator, and a researcher. And so my interest is coming from the art education side of this, because I'm teaching people to be art teachers. And a lot of the few students I have who are of color often ask me, well, what's the story of art for African American children. Who taught them? Who helped develop the artists that we know of and the ones that we don't know so much about? So I've been doing a lot of research on um, Thomas Hunster, who started that pretty much here in the Washington DC area. So what I just kind of wanted to ask is, because I've been frustrated by this, I found all this information about him, but not one image of him, and I know they're out there. So what I wanted to ask you as librarians, archivists, collectors, um, people who maintain collections, and historians, is what sort of partnerships do you have 
with other institutions. Like for example, I went to the Sumner School collection to find out what I could find out about him. With other um, archives in your areas to help people like me who are researchers and trying to tell that story. Because I think that gets to what you're talking about. The more we publish about the importance of these archives and our story, the more people will know about it, the more appreciation you can de develop from really young children on up. Thank you. So I can speak a little bit about the education aspect at least. Um, so we are starting to um, work with schools actually. So for the Faith Ringgold Study Room for instance, we're going to be working with PG County schools and educators um, so that they can create um, lesson plans based around the room and that will kind of be an introduction. It will be a K-12, I believe, program, so um, introducing um, students to what an archive is, how you can use it, and that kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of how we're starting our foray kind of into the educational aspect with archives. Um, and that will also include the Driscoll papers and the entire archive. So it will be teaching them how to do research what an archive is and making sure that they realize that it's not just this old stuff that looks cool, but that you can actually use it in a really kind of formidable way to prove a point or to like look at this historical aspect. So um, that's something that we're doing at the Driscoll Center. What I want to quickly uh, do is address your question. Thomas Watson Hunster is in our collection. We have his paintings. And I have the same problem with what you're expressing. So if I find something, what you're looking for, I will let you know. So I, would, I need to talk to you later on. Now, I have a feeling. Thomas Watson Hunster, as you know, everyone else needs to know, he was the only black art teacher in Washington, D.C. He had a way. He would ride his way into all of the college schools and teach art. Now, this was around the turn of the century. So I'm guessing there's got to be something on him, an image of him. Washington Historical Society, believe it or not, National Archives, History of Washington, D.C., Library of Congress, Grand Book Room. There has to be something, even Martin Luther King Jr. Library, Washingtonian section. There has to be something written on him or an image of him somewhere in the archives of the city because he was the only one. So if I find something, I will share it with you. Thank you all for coming. I just want to make one mention. Morales Mega Research, Research Center. Center. I mentioned our stuff is digitized. We have our digital, we have our digital Howard, Howard website. So check it out. So dh.howard.edu. We, we, we have several of our collections. We're about to put We're up, about to put up our 6,000 image negatives collection within the month. So check it out.